Hey everyone, this is Jake from Luxury Visuals and today I'm going to show you how to create 360 renders. We can use these 360s on websites, apps, Facebook, YouTube. We can use them with the Oculus Rift and Google Cardboard. I'll also show you how you can render multiple views locally on one machine. And in a later lesson I'll show you how to add hotspots, but first let's create some 360s. So in this quickest way to make, we will cover 1. Creating an override material 2. Setting up 360 cameras 3. How to make them usable in virtual reality and 4. How to render multiple views locally on one machine. Firstly I'm going to open up a generic Evermotion scene to demonstrate this process. So let's start by opening up the scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on an override material. This will speed up the demonstration. So let's create a new material. A new V-Ray material. And we'll change the diffuse to something around 60 and we'll rename this override and then in the V-Ray global switches we'll turn override material on and we can drag override into the slot and make sure it's an instance and if we go to exclude and we find the glass materials we'll select them free and we'll move them over and hit OK another thing we'll do to speed up the render process is go to the light lister over here and we'll bring down our main dome light to 16 and the rest of these we'll bring down to 8 just to speed up the render process and now if you hit render you should end up with something like this so in this demo we'll be using cameras that are already in the scene if you're creating your own, I recommend that they're at least 1.6 meters off the ground and they shouldn't be above any tables and I'd also recommend that they all the targets are straightforward. Let's also change our film gate to 360 and our focal length to 160. So now let's render some 360s. Let's select the camera and we'll make sure that there's no vertical tilt on and also that the vignetting is switched off. And then we'll go to render setup and we'll make sure the image aspect is on too. And then we'll go to the V-Ray settings, camera, and we'll change this to spherical and override and make sure that's on 360. And if you hit render, you should end up with something like this. Okay, that's great. So now let's see how we can make them usable on a VR headset like the Oculus Rift or Google Cardboard. And all we need to do for this is add a V-Ray stereoscopic helper. So if we go to create, helpers and go to V-Ray and select a V-Ray stereoscopic we can put that anywhere in our scene and I'd change that to 6.3 I found that's the best for Google Cardboard and if we go up to our render settings again because we'll be rendering two images in one we need to change the aspect ratio to 4 so now if we hit render we should end up with something like this. Okay, so that's great. So let's check our other views. So what we'll do is we'll disable stereoscopic for now and we'll change the image aspect back to two. And we'll go to the other cameras and we'll quickly render them as well. So here's camera one. And we'll also check out camera two. And here's what camera two looks like. So that's cool. So we can turn this stereoscopic back on by hitting enable. And we'll change our aspect ratio back to four. Also going to change the uh, resolution to 12,000. This is huge, but they'll look great on Oculus Rift. So now let's turn all the settings up so we get a high quality render. You'll be able to find the settings I used in the PDF attached. A couple of things to note, make sure we turn off override material and we'll also make sure that our color mapping is set to 2.2 so when we save out we've got the correct gamma. And let's put all the light subdivs back up. We're going to put our main dome light up to 64 and we'll put the rest up to 16. So we can close that 
And then back in our render settings, let's make sure that we're actually saving them out to the right place. So we've got three cameras. So if we go to camera one and in our render output, we can rate camera one and we'll call this render dot targa and hit save and OK. So normally I'd send these off to a external render farm, something like Rebus, but you can also use Backburner to queue them up and render them overnight. To do this, we'll open up Backburner Server, Manager and Monitor, and we'll hit Connect and OK. And we can see that my computer's there. And now if we go to Submit to Network Rendering, we can call this Camera 1. And we'll connect. We'll select the computer, initially suspended, and we'll hit submit and then if you go to the render queue you'll see it's queued up here now let's do that for the next two renders so we go to V-Ray we'll save these out and we'll create a new folder camera 2 So now we can see our free renders are queued up. So I mean, when you're finished with your computer, you can just right click and hit activate. When you wake up in the morning, you'll find all the output renders in your output folders. So these rendered out overnight. So we've got three cameras and um, in a later tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do some post-production on your renders.